The feeling watching the clouds passing by mountain forest stays indescribable to me. Such a beautiful example of active nature. Mount Kinabalu Park is also the center of plant diversity for Southeast Asia. Within the park, more than 5,000 vascular plant species have been counted. World's largest pitcher plant, the Nepenthes racha, and one of the rarest orchids in the world, the Rothschild slipper orchid, are found here. And while I'm working on my film narration at home, I can only wonder why I once again didn't have enough time to explore more flora and fauna in this unique landscape. This is day 5th of Mount Kinabalu and uh, we yesterday evening found a creek. Um, it's actually my first creek ever I've seen in my life. It, unfortunately it's not alive anymore. And at the moment we are trying to find out if it's the one we think which is a rare species or not really rare but in any case there is no record about a long time so it might have been seen last time 1895 but uh, guys from the museum will soon come and pick it up and uh, see what the stitches is and how the bird is exactly we already photographed it and uh, maybe we're seeing a rare species returning but maybe it's also a migratory species we don't know yep. but it's yep. very 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 pretty yep. so um, yeah, it was just lying here. I thought the cats would have eaten it yep. this morning. But the dogs, Luckily but no. Uh, no. Luckily no. We can put it in our car because it's smelly already. Yeah. But it's very pretty. I show you once more how pretty that is. Just not from here it's pretty, but have a look here. So nice. And red legs, you can clearly see the red legs. So it's not a big bird, but it's definitely worth to see it. And actually, it's like a lowland forest, uh, lowland uh, yeah. rail. So it doesn't really occur in this altitude. So we gotta find out more about that. So we're gonna go birding for live birds more, yep. hopefully. Actually, now we have two 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 uh, two species. They say one is actually migratory, another one actually is uh, resident bird. But uh, for this attitude, a bit rare because they are most in lowland. But that's why they are still arguing whether it's still a migratory or a resident. But and do you have them here residently? Yeah, I've been seeing this before, but uh, in this altitude, this is my first time. Despite the large range of the red leg crakes, little is known about these birds. The last record of this species within the Mount Kinabalu Park has been made in 1987, which was suspected to be a migrant. Until today, we are not able to find out if also our specimen was a migrant, which we consider as unusual because of the time of the year that we found it. Do they have this species yet? No. First the live bird I was able to film this morning is the male of a recent split species sitting on a wet barbed wire. This is a rufous vented flycatcher that formerly was classified with the indigo flycatcher but that differ from them by having a different throat feather colorization, different upper parts and undertail covers, slightly shorter bill and more. subspecies and this one is the Sabini ventris. It occurs in North and Central Borneo. This Bornean black banded squirrel is another North Bornean endemic. The dense cover of high forests throughout the island of Borneo has led to the evolution of many squirrel species in all sizes, from a tiny mouse size to the size of a house cat. More than 40 squirrel species, including 12 flying squirrel species, have evolved here. So we're here on the mountain top, on the platform, and I have a squirrel here. Look how tame it is. Well, it's actually not the way to be. Feeding squirrels is the worst you can do because they kill birds, they are nestlings, the eggs, and also it's not natural to feed birds and to feed squirrels and all this. They should actually 
be untouched and not eat any crab. There might be a lot of Bing, cookies binger. being fed. I wanted to see if it really comes that close, and it does, but uh, it's not good for wildlife. They should not, of course, be dependent on cookies. It is found at middle elevations that seem to be restricted to lower mountain forests and upper dipterocarp forests. They are diurnal and eat plants, especially fruits, but also seeds, grain, nuts and flowers and insects, mainly black ants, interestingly. But their natural diet doesn't contain any cookie. There is little info on behavior about these squirrels in literature, even though the park visitors here think they are just common squirrels. They play a main role in the ecosystems of their habitat, as they are seed dispersers and also serve as prey for many carnivorous animals like felids, canids, raptors and snakes. Unfortunately, they are also important to the pet trade, but some of these padded squirrels escaped in other parts of the world, where they are now causing big ecological problems. The same story as with the introduced Eastern Grey Squirrel here in Europe, which is the greatest food competitor for our native Red Squirrel. Look how beautiful he is. Or she, who can say? Oh, lovely. Okay, do you see my face as well? No. you see my face now? I cannot. You want to see? Or? So we just found a very cute lizard on the street. Wow. I would say it's a flying lizard, but I don't know. In any case, it looks like a little dragon. It has all the skin tooth coming out here and also over here. And uh, I'm very curious to find out what's the name of this pretty guy or girl who knows. Oh, come here. I want to show you its long tail, you see? Amazingly long. I would say it's at least twice its body size. And even more amazing for me, maybe also for you guys, the front fingers from its feet are still little. But the ones to grab with, I think, when he is jumping or flying, is the hind legs fingers, which are large. No show, sure, Satara. I don't know what type of uh, lizard or dragon it is. Hmm. Actually, in our national park here, we got Kinabalu dragon. You know. Hmm. It's endemic. Might be a little dragon then. Yep, it's very tiny. Back home, it took me quite a long time to identify this little lizard. But due to help of friends, we were finally able to find out that we have been discovering a unique endemic of which little is known about. This is a juvenile Kinabalu crested dragon female. What a found! Since it was never kept in captivity and no one could describe how the juveniles would look like. Adults are greenish with lots of dorsal spiky scale plates which are pointing vertical up starting from the hair till its tail and even the dewlap has spiky scale plates. It was firstly discovered in 1937 here in Mount Kinabalu area and the first photo of a living specimen was taken in year 2005. A little big sensation for us to have made such a close encounter with an endemic dragon that seems to have not been reported before as a juvenile. Often with birding, the male birds are the most likely to be seen. In this case, I finally filmed a female for you. It's a black sided flower packer, also known as Borneo flower packer. They are occurring in the highlands of northwest, central and southeast Borneo, 
where their natural habitats are subtropical and tropical moist lowland and mountain forests. Guys, I can tell you how happy I am, and he is, because yes. we've seen a super life. Ah! Yes. Borneo is full of nice endemic species, but you're most probably only once in your life able to see what I have just seen. That's why I always say the birds are attracted to me or I to them. However, what have we just clicked? I think we just now saw is the crimson headed partridge. Crimson had a yeah, it's well. actually is the most uh, people wanted to see. I but never, I Tara never. will tell you something. <laughs> Let me finish because it's <laughs> exciting. She is the one who bring all the Borneo species to the place. Like I believe, our certain all the Borneo species come to her and then let us film and shoot it. Don't Are you guys believe? So I need to give you a kiss. <laughs> She is super, not me. She is the luck. It's a lucky star. I actually came here because he invited oh. me and uh, I thought he would show me the species, which is actually happening, but uh, crimson headed partridge, yes. We have it on here if you can see it, but later on I will show you the film that I made. I didn't get a good shot, but I concentrated on filming. And I was very, very lucky that I could make my 4K films about it. Okay, for besides that, we have the, if I'm not wrong, in just a second, or I mean a minute, there will be four endemic species come to her. Crimson headed partridge, the bonion uh, flower pecker, the bonion flower pecker, yeah. the bonion whistler. They come another one actually, the last one I think should be the bonion leaf bird. Some what about the little pied flycatcher? No, that is not the end. Okay, okay. This is the four endemic come to her in less than a minute. Nah, come on. Come on. A few more you minutes maybe. It's a magic, <laughs> magic woman. So I, you know you got a song, right? Magic, oh, you know, magic woman. No, <laughs> not really. <laughs> but uh, Barney but anyway, is anyway, amazing. but I call her super woman. <laughs> Besides you. We the time you haven't come, right? We can't expand our film at this moment. Mm. Sorry guys, but we gotta keep on filming because all the flower packers won't come if we are so loud. Yeah. But uh, sorry, mm. just want to yes. have add on another one. Yes. Maybe the the the, the dragon? Yeah the dragon, I just I think the dragon I just said, yeah. yeah is also endemic species. Yeah yeah just just imagine. Yeah. So you imagine? Let's keep quiet again. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What is that? Why this poorly known bird appeared, we don't know exactly. But a good explanation besides luck might be its blind right eye, which we recognized later on. If you're a keen birder like me and get confronted all of the sudden with a tremendous beautiful species like this appearing very close to you, you might be unable to hold your film cam steady for the few seconds you are able to film it. Elvin's father Chang had noticed it first and called us in. The crimson headed partridge is rarely recorded on photo and film and little is known about its behavior and status. It's classified as least constant since their distribution size is still quite large, which are roughly described the mountains of North Borneo, and we are in the Mount Kinabalu area. Even though we have been able to give names to all of the birds that have been discovered so far, it is surprising how little some species are yet discovered by their behavior. You might think it's only a blackbird, but indeed it got its name from its high-pitched whistle sound it makes. This is an immature bird waiting for its mother to return with food. It's called a Bornean whistling thrush. But where there is good food, there are competitors as well. A common tree shrew is not amused about this plumaged invader of its territory. So the immature still has to wait for its food. But its 
mother is giving it another attempt. She knows she can find good earthworms here. But she was warned the tree shrew is very alert. Ah, oh, what a pity. Mommy, I'm hungry. She comes finally another meal again. But its mother is cautious. Might it be because of me filming them? I try to stay as calm as possible. Indeed, I'm disturbing them less when filming instead of taking my DSLR cam to fire on them. Juvenile got a bit desperate in the meanwhile and plucked off some of the medinilla flower parts without eating them. Bornean whistling thrushes occur on Bornean mountains up to 2,800 meters and are moderately common and widespread within their restricted range. They mainly feed on invertebrates, inclusive earthworms, crickets, beetles, snails, wood lice and berries, and I have even read frogs as well. At last, Mum has found something for me. Yes, yes that was the one I wanted to film, the endemic Bornean tree pie. But this fairly large bird with 40 cm in length prefers to be a terrestrial acrobat rather than a film model. Have a look. It's a relatively noisy bird and can also mimic the calls of other birds. This tree pie is fairly common in most mountain ranges in northern and central parts of Borneo. It mainly occurs between 300 to 2800 meter. It inhabits primary and secondary forest, especially scrub jungles, forest edges, bamboo thickets and scrubland and is sometimes seen in cultivated areas too. But it mainly forages in tree canopies, alone or in small groups, searching for small fruits like these ones here or insects. Generally it's omnivorous, but primarily carnivorous. They prey on a large variety of invertebrates and their larvae, such as grasshoppers, beetles and other large insects. It can become quite tame visiting villages to feed on scraps. You are already listening to a pair of ashy drongos calling. The ones I already presented to you in my previous film didn't make a single sound, so have a listen.
When we returned to the city and its blinding streetlights, Elvin pointed out to the overloaded electricity cables. Now that was an incredibly view. Hundreds of barn swallows from the subspecies Gotularis were roosting at night in the middle of the city. If you wake up in the morning with such an amazing view, you most probably will know your day starts great. Lots of more endemics to come, inclusive steep sweaty hikes and a desperate waiting for one of the tiniest birds found here. Seems it's time to climb a steep mountain again. We're heading off for birds again. This is day six. And um, still not in shape. Man, going up too high. Another recently split species is this pale faced bulbul that was formerly classified with the flavescent bulbuls. This endemic inhabits mountain ranges of North and North Central Borneo and it's a bit smaller and with a different plumage colorization than the flavescent bulbuls. These little Dipogasia fruits that look like little raspberries seem to have an irresistible taste. I would also like to try some, but yet can't reach them. These pale-faced bulbuls inhabit tall bushes, thickets and clearings in hill dip pterocarp in lower and upper mountain forests. What a jewel just flew in! This golden ape barbet also had to get some of these delicious berries. In fact, barbets are often more heard than seen since they prefer to forage in the tree crowns and singing all day from there. This barbet is a Bornean endemic with a very restricted range in the North Bornean Mountains. From Kinabalu and Trosmali south to Mulu and Mursud, recently also discovered in the Menjapa Mountains in East Kalimantan. Little is known about its food, but for sure enough Debregesia berries for today already. Here comes the jam! This morning I didn't realize that the sound recording function on my cam wasn't enabled. So I can only briefly remember these talks. The guys building up the station on Mount Kinabalu were carrying some metal timbering up. Each piece did weight more than 15 kilo, I even thought more than 20 kilo. And the next steep trail up will lead us to a very hectic little bird with a high-pitched call that I had to film according to Elvin because it's hard to find and photograph little endemic in the heat of the day. Okay, here we go. So, Kara, you want to join us? Have a rest? Yeah. Maybe I watch out for the birds in the other direction. Yeah, why not? See, CP now also. From this morning, he wake up, I think, four something oh. in the morning. Four o'clock in yeah. the morning. What time have you been at the birding spot at the entrance? Six o'clock. 
Oh, I wanted to be there at six also, but they always have to have first breakfast. I <laughs> already have breakfast before six. I can't eat so early. <laughs> uh, could you actually tell me about the endemics here? CP. CP, okay. Hi. CP. Could you could you tell me about the endemics here? Endemics here. Yeah, why are we here we for are which birds? For this uh, bare-headed uh, laughing truss. That's the endemic here. Very unique bird. Mm -hmm. It's bold, bold. Yeah. And for the rest, it's black or? The gray, gray color, dark gray. Yeah, with a bit is red color. Very nice bird, unique. Which other birds? Other birds? Well, the, like a morning whistler, uh, yellow in color, very vocal. And uh, we have uh, this uh, white head brobule around this area, white head dragon, Bobbery white head spider hunter. Hmm. Yeah, those are the endemics. Uh, the common one here, uh, in fact, is this uh, what they call chestnut hooded laughing grass. Why are you so fascinated about birds? Because it's beautiful, they are very beautiful. Yeah. So you're into birding half of your life already or longer? No. I I think it's about six years. Six six over years. Not very long. But I enjoy birding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. What's your favorite bird? Favorite? There are too many of them. Each of them is unique and beautiful. Basically, uh, um, uh, I like I like those uh, colorful ones. Yeah. So you think that many people should visit Borneo to see the birds? Yes, I think so. Yeah. It's always good birding here, right? Every day. Yes, yes. And we have beautiful jungles. Yeah. And here is no mosquitoes. In here this no one. mountain area, no. Yeah. Lowland area, yes. He's, He's fully yeah. gone now. Oh. Still alive. Get a nap for a while. Your 80 years old father is a little bit more active still. Can't yep. get enough to explore wildlife. Yep. And there he comes. Found nothing special? Yes. Show you. Ah. What's that? I have not counted the endless hours we have been trying to see and record this Bornean stub tail for you. It was clearly alarmed to defend its territory after we played our male's recorded calls, but it hopped and flew around like a flummy. This Bornean endemic warbler is most common in montane forests above 2000 meter. They're all unsharp, like I said. Minus, mi minus the EV. How much? 0 0.3 or, or 0 0.7. It's okay. Yeah, that's much better. That's why I told you. But then it's getting blurry again. You see? But it's good at the back. Yeah, this but, but cold. cloudy, cloudy. Ah, we want that. No, we want blurry, we want not misty cloudy.
album you have just shooted another live for more or less Naya or the second time right yep which was that actually this is the uh, Bolon Subtail also one of our best and cutie cutie small little tiny birds but actually so far with Kara this is so far to really improve my shot actually I get this shot five years ago it's not as good as today so I don't know this super woman really can do the job oh come on so you become a, my lucky star oh yeah 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 so I'm happy everybody's happy about <laughs> this morning yeah I went with the whole group indeed yeah we went with the whole group and they're very steep hill to climb yeah but deserve it yes we're happy right Yes, and I'm wondering actually about the ringing here. Uh, you told me about the research um, program going on here. Tell me more about it, please. It actually, it started maybe two, three years ago. I heard from the park management, they said, we are actually complaining why all the birds suddenly all got the ring on the foot. Some even though they have very bad tacted ring on the foot until the foot almost uh, rotten or what Whoa. we can see is very badly done. So have four rings complaint. most of the birds, right? Yeah. But so far, I this have some info back from the management from the park. They said they are actually signing an agreement five to six years program. Uh, one of the university on America they're doing research for all the park inside the inside this park. They research for the bird. So. I'm not sure what's going on and how many years still ongoing. Uh, so far, what I can say is the good and the bad. So the good is that we will know more info about the birds. Yep, yep. Another tiny bird with four rings on its legs is this little pied flycatcher male. Here in Borneo, we find the subspecies Western Money. His offspring joins him. flies off again It's too hot to be active It seems the right time for a good sun bath This 10 cm long tropical forest bird is another not yet much studied bird so far known from its diet is that they see mainly insectivorous. The midday sun is really too hot. Time to seek the shade again and preen my feathers. Monitoring is nice, but four rings too much for me, especially for these little legs. Yeah. All right. This is our bridge. Let's see how to climb it. <laughs> Today's slogan, what we are not even aware of, is filming endemic birds of Borneo that are having a recent taxonomy split in the year that we are filming them and that is 2016. This Bornean green magpie that is endemic once again to mountain forests of North Borneo likes to dwell in thick vegetation in the mid and upper story of forest and makes only short flights. I was astonished by its plumage and sound. And the chestnut hooded laughing treasures again. You're able to see them here in good numbers, but filming these active fellows is another thing.
Some spectacular mountain views don't need a big description. Day 6 is ending and after a very successful birding we are leaving the Mount Kinabalu area to head on to our next destination tomorrow morning which is located far away from here in East Sava. Now enjoy some of my selected outtake scenes. Actually I'm filming, Chang, I'm oh. filming. Oh. I'm here at the starting point of Mount Kinabalu and we have a platform here where we can see all the valley here and just there I just vanished <laughs> with a little squirrel. Okay. Do you press record? Already. Okay. Go. I didn't see that. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh. It's a red red leg leg crack. Red legged crack, okay? But I always need to wake up early. Yeah, I know, but I have a driver and he <laughs> he's always tired in the morning. And he's sleeping now. Right. <laughs> he's already with the angels, seems like. Yeah. Yes, I want to go, go up early, then tire got a big problem. So find a place to farm. I filmed the birds in the meanwhile. Yeah, we are like, can call us as a orangutan. <coughs> Meaning is the wild man. Ah. Orangutans sometimes rest like this as well. The males as I can remember. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Lazy why hanging around. <coughs> That's why he's a, he is the closest to human. 99 point, I think, what? 99 something, whatever. Percent. Yeah. Yeah. And we recorded something, but the last recording we did, the recording was about to be lost on the press by my friends. So that was the most important and that was recorded.